Hey, this is Will Welker. Today I'm going to show you my microgreen juicing process. I juice about three trays per day, and so that means I'm planting three trays per day, and depending on the temperature, it takes about 10 days from seed to harvest. So I'll go through my process. I use a harvester to harvest my greens. It's uh, something I got at Bootstrap Farmer for around 500 bucks. And it's convenient. If you don't want to spend that much, you could harvest it with scissors. It would take about three minutes to do the harvest I do with the greens harvester. So that's purely optional. And I'll go through my process and show you how I harvest my greens. So first I'm gonna get my harvester. It's got a wicked blade you need to be aware of. Um, every time you handle this, you need to be aware of this very sharp blade. So always hold it in such a way that you're not going to get injured by that. And it needs to be lubricated. I use just coconut oil that's made for cooking. I think they have an oil that they use for this, but... And I just put a little bit on there and I just kind of smear it around a little bit on that blade. And we'll test it out. Okay, so greens harvester is working. So we'll grab my, my tallest, most mature tray of wheat. And next to the wheat, I'm going to place sunflower. For some reason, when you juice the sunflower greens mixed with the wheatgrass, you get less foaming. If you've ever juiced wheatgrass, you get some foam during the juicing process and for some reason mixing those two reduces that. So the next thing, my tallest peas. Here's my tallest pea shoots. And now they're all lined up for harvest. These two go pretty quick. You'll notice that I slow down a little bit more on the wheat grass and I also raise up just a little bit just in case there's a little mold there. I don't wanna get that in the juice. And I have this pipe here as sort of a spacer because if I kind of rest on that, it puts me at about the right height for my trays. Okay, all done with that. And so here, I've got my bucket full of greens. I can come along with some scissors and get some that we missed. Sometimes I just put this in my daily salad. And like I said, if you don't wanna spend $500 Plus you have to buy your own drill and I recommend you get a powerful one, which is probably at least another hundred bucks. So it's worth it if you consider the health benefits um, of juicing and any, anything that makes it more convenient sort of motivates you to do it. And so these are now my expended root mats. These will go out to the chickens. I should show you what I do with those. This is just a, a paint scraper. I just run it along the bottom here and it helps those roots release. And I stack those to dry them out. And 
And so you can look at here and see how we did with our mold. You can see there is a little bit of mold down there, but we cut well above it. And that's usually what I try to accomplish. And this might look like a lot of waste, but we don't waste anything. So this is really high in amino acids and it's just the type of thing that mealworms eat in nature. And you can see I've got my darkling beetles producing mealworms here. So all that goes in there for them. It provides a good source of food and also about the right moisture content without creating mold for them. Okay, ready to take this up for juicing. So my philosophy is only taste it once. It's not that great. I drink it in one swig and chase it with something that's a little easier to swallow. Bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> 